Today, I'm going to show you how you can take beautifully embroidered designs off of sweatshirts and put them on back of denim shirts, or maybe you have a sweatshirt cardigan that you'd like to transfer the design to. And if you're sitting here saying, wait, what? How are we gonna do this? I'm gonna show you. It's a very easy technique to make this beautiful design into an applique that you can then place on another garment. So stick around and we're gonna get into this tutorial right now. I'm Christine and I want to welcome you to the Creative Sewist Community YouTube channel where we discuss sewing techniques, time-saving sewing tips, and fun, easy projects. If this sounds like your type of community, then please subscribe and ring the bell so that you are notified every time a new helpful video is uploaded. And now, let's get into today's lesson. So before we get started with today's lesson, I want to show you the back of denim shirts and show you the difference in the styles. Now, as you will see in this shirt number one, that the, the pleating in the back is facing towards the outside. It does not go towards the inside of the shirt. Uh, the other popular style is that it's actually pleated inward. And while either style is fine to use for this project, if you at all possible can get a shirt like this one that has no pleating on the back, that is going to be your top choice. But like I said, if you're only able to get this or this style, go ahead and pick them up. I mean, you may find that one style fits you much better than another and that's perfectly fine. But just know that you may have to adjust the placement of your applique depending on how this is done. So now that I've selected my denim shirt, plain back, I'm looking at this sweatshirt. Now what I noticed immediately is that there are two front seams that run vertically along this sweatshirt. As you can see, there is one right there and then the other one is over here. So that is going to limit the width of my overall applique. If you're fortunate enough, your sweatshirt will not have these seams, so you can cut your applique a little bit larger. But for me, I don't have that, so I'm gonna to have to work with what I have. So I'm going to cut along these seams. Now I'm going to lift this shirt up so that I can do this. Now I'm cutting on the outside of my seam and I will show you why in a little while. But for now, I just wanna cut that free. Let me go over here and cut this side. Do not throw this fabric away. Hold on to it till you're done with the project because if you like to do a lot of upcycling, I'm sure you're gonna find other things that you can use with it. So what you will see here is that the piece is now cut free from the sweatshirt. What I will now do, I will cut this off here for now. I am going to apply stability to the back of this t-shirt that will fuse onto this. And I will show you that step over at the ironing board. So here is what the stability looks like this is a fusible interfacing that I'm going to apply to the back of this cutout. Now you may be asking, why am I gonna do this? Well, it's going to provide a little bit more strength and stability. So what I'll do is I'm gonna press that onto it. Like I said, this is a woven interfacing. Then I'm going to go, once I have that on, I'm going to then apply one layer of steam -a seam light. And that will be the sticky stuff that we're going to fuse the applique to the shirt. But it's important that we stabilize first and then add the adhesive. So with the wrong side of the embroidery and sweatshirt facing up, I've applied the bumpy side of the stability 
the top. What you feel here will be smooth. Make sure that the bumpy side, which is the glue, is facing the shirt. Using a medium to a medium high heat, you start in the center and you press your way out. Steam is okay to do this. The reason you want to work from the center out is so that if you have any kind of folds or creases in your fabric, you're going to be pushing them out. So to check and make sure that you don't have any kind of creases or wrinkles pressed in, let this cool for a moment, flip it over and check. And what you're going to notice is that this fabric did start to stretch and pull a little bit and we don't want that. So that's why it's important to stabilize this before we do anything else. Once you have this done, then I'm going to cut my seam a seam light. It is very important that you use the light and not the seam a seam to regular weight. If you use the regular weight, it's going to be really heavy, but we want the light version. So I've cut a piece of my seam a seam light. What you will notice is that one side has a grid printed. These are one inch squares and the other side is smooth. There are no no grids printed. So what you'll do, you're going to remove the paper without the grid. And then you're going to lay it on top of your piece. Now what you'll see is that this stuff under here is sticky. So we want to lay this on top Smooth it over with your hands. Just do a, a light pressing. Now, if you heard that, it means it's sticking to my ironing board. So it's very important that when you press this on, make sure that you do not press this on your ironing board because it is a monster to remove. So I'm going to take my iron. Again, it is set on a medium to a medium high heat. And I'm just going to press this over that interfacing that we just applied. Now it doesn't have to be, and I got it on my ironing board. This doesn't have to cover the entire applique front, just enough that it's sticking to your, your fabric. So I'm going to take this over to the cutting board and I'm going to show you how to square up this design before we move to the next step. So the nice thing about doing an applique is that it doesn't have to be a perfectly square design. If you decided that you wanted to maybe make this in a floral edging, you could do that. If you wanted to do it, say, more of a diamond print, um, you could do that and then you can add some fabric around the edge of it. Whatever you decide to do, make the design unique to you so that it reflects your personality. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm actually going to start to trim this up a little bit because I have too many rough edges and this is kind of difficult to see my finished piece with all these edges. So what I'll do and be conservative when you're doing your initial rough cuts because that way you will have an extra room to work in case you make a mistake. So always be conservative when you're doing these initial cuts. So I have the neck band here and I don't want that in my design so I'm going to have to cut along here and get this out of the way. So then I have a little bit, I'm going to leave this a little bit long for now. So for now, I'm going to leave this a little bit long. I'm going to square this up and I'm going to grab my denim shirt. Okay, so I've squared this up just a little bit more. I, again, I was very conservative with my cutting, but at least it's a more accurate square. 
What I now need to decide is where I want to place this. Do I want to place it up near the back yoke or do I want to move it down just a little off of that? Do I want to leave this extra fabric here or do I want to trim that off and make it look more like a back patch? And if so, how long do I want to make this? So once you've determined that length, you're now getting to see a clear picture of how much room you have to add additional fabric and embellishments to the back of your shirt. For me, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to find a coordinating fabric that's complementary to this design and I'm going to create a border around it. So I'm going to go get that fabric and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have completed truing up my design and I've determined the final size of this applique. What I want to show you before I go ahead and press this onto the shirt is that I have determined the position on the back of the denim shirt. I have marked my top placement with a washable marker. It's one of the purple pens. And then I've also gone ahead and I've marked my lower corners. This way, whenever I'm trying to line this up after I've remove this paper backing, I'll, I'll get it a little bit more accurately placed. Now, after I have this pressed on, I'm also going to be framing it out. I found some fabric and what I want to show you, I found this really nice stripe that coordinates beautifully with it. So what I'll be doing is I will be framing it. Now, I will use a quarter inch seam allowance, but I'm not going to be applying any interfacing to the back of this trim. It's not necessary for this project. So what I will do is I will press this on. I'm going to then stitch a quarter inch seam allowance along here. I will do the bottom and the top first. Then because this print is a stripe, I want to get the placement a little bit more accurate. So what I'll do is then I will move to this, the left and the right side. So I will steam this on now. Because this design has rhinestones on it already and the thread, it, it does have some raised texture to it. I will be using a press cloth. If you don't have one, if you have a cotton, um, a cotton tea towel or a cotton fabric that you can use that doesn't have a lot of lint to it to protect your embroidery you can do so. So let me steam this on. I forgot to mention that when you want to before you steam this on you're going to have to very carefully remove the paper from the back of it. Now this is tacky on the back here so you you don't really want to handle it a whole lot. Take your time lining this up and before you press it or steam it, you're going to want to make sure that you have your, you have your measurements correct. So I have it, this is about a one and three eighths inch from the top from this seam one and a half. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go in here and just just tweak the layout a little bit and then I'll steam it. Okay for the purposes of this demonstration I took the press cloth off of my heat press. Um, this one will withstand higher temperatures but you can go ahead and use a cotton press cloth if you have one. You don't have to worry about getting these high heat ones. So ideally you start in the middle and you work your way to the edge of your design. You can rest the iron on it for a few moments just till, just till the glue adheres to the fabric. You can hear the steam coming off the iron. It's not penetrating this press cloth. Okay, so now I have this pressed on. I'm going to let this cool for just a moment. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to press it from the other side. I like to give it just a little boost of heat. 
Make sure you smooth it out. Okay, so let this cool for just a moment and I'll see you over at the sewing machine. Okay, so we finally made it to the sewing machine. I have put the quarter inch seam allowance foot on my machine. I've threaded it with just some general utility sewing thread. I'm using white for the, this portion of the design so that you can see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna sew my top seam first. This is a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to be starting here along the edge. You're gonna stitch a couple stitches, then do a couple locking back stitches. Don't sew over your pins if at all possible. If you hit one with your needle, it can really damage not just the machine, but it could also injure you. Okay, so I'm now at the end of my seam. Just gonna put a locking stitch, trim my threads, lift the foot. I'm going to repeat that same process down here on the lower seam. I will then open this up, take it to the ironing board. I'm gonna press it open. Okay, so what I wanna mention and show you now is that I have sewn the top and the bottom seams. I've pressed the seams open. And what you're going to notice is that I have taken a ruler and my purple marking pen and I have marked a one half inch, I marked a line one half inch from the top seam. Done that on the top and the bottom. What I'm going to be doing is I'm using this. This is my tip to help you um, to make it like a really even line whenever you're sewing this is you are going to fold this under along this purple line and you're going to pin it in place. So we need to do this first before we do the sides. So what I'm going to do, make sure you don't pin it to the ironing board. So you may have to put your one hand underneath the shirt while you pin this. So what I like to do is I'll put a pin on each end and one in the middle and then I work my way back through. And what I have found is this makes it a lot easier to pin it. it just simplifies the process. Okay, so I have a pin here, here, and here. I'm then going to go in here and put two more pins and I'll do the top and then I'll, sh I'll meet you back over at the sewing machine. So I am now back at the sewing machine. What you will notice is that I have pinned along this top and the bottom. You can't see the bottom in this shot, but I did fold that under and I pinned it in place. Now, my piece, which is an inch and a half wide, is a little longer on the top and the bottom and I did that deliberately so I'm going to show you why you need it in just a few moments but I do have a pin here so since I'm starting out I want to just do one or two stitches I'm going to anchor it there I'm going to pull this pin out remember we're not going to sew over pins we're going to continue sewing with the quarter inch seam allowance. I'll show you this seam. Okay, so now I am at the bottom of my hem here. I want to stitch just right to the edge of that fabric that's underneath there. I want to lock this all in place and remember there's a pin under here so be very careful and I'm going to trim it. What I will then do, I'm going to sew the other side before I go to the ironing board. 
but once I get over there I'm going to press this open and I'm going to repeat that same process of marking one half inch in folding this under and then pinning it in and I'll show you how to do these corners at the bottom there's a little trick to it so I will show you how to do that after I sew the other side okay okay so I press this now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this under that's this is why it's really important that you mark this line I'm going to fold that under and don't worry if this isn't perfect if you have too much excess fabric under here which it looks like I do I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna trim a little bit of that excess I'm off now don't cut your shirt it's really important that you don't cut that shirt but I'm gonna trim off that excess that's adding a little bit too much bulk to my my corner here so I'm going to fix this Make sure it's laying pretty neatly. Now don't worry if you see a fold here because we're going to put a stitch over it anyway. And I think this is probably as, not as straight as I'm going to get this. Again, reach under your shirt. Make sure you don't pin the ironing board and stick a pin. Now don't worry about this. If you have to keep fussing with it, it's kind of hard for me to do all this and get it completely accurate while I'm trying to get it in the camera shot. So just keep fussing with it until you get it correct. And then you're going to repeat that same process I just showed you on the other three corners. And once you have everything pinned, I'll meet you back over at the sewing machine and I'll show you how to finish this off. So we are back at the machine. I'm going to do the last of the stitching and that will finish off this project. Um, but what I want to show you is I have the open toe foot on the machine. I've decided to use a decorative stitch. Uh, this is called the blanket stitch. My stitch length is 3.3 millimeters and I've set my width to 3.9 depending on which stitch you decide to use you may need to adjust it so I'm going to start at the one corner and what I'll do is I'm going to sew and step onto the trim and I'm going to do that the whole way around this and then I will show you what it looks like when it's finished so I've made it back to my starting point I have it all stitched down what you now need to do is make sure that you lock it in place you want to do a back stitch or how whatever stitch you've you've selected you want to make sure that you make sure this is locked into place so whether it's back stitching a couple stitches or hitting a, a locking button locking button on your machine however your machine operates just make sure that that stitching is secure then what you can do I'm going to finish mine off here I'm gonna hit the back stitch and then what I'll do I'm going to trim my thread and I'm done with that stitching so Let's go over and let's look at a broader picture so you can see the finished results. And as you can see, my applique design is now finished. I will go back over it and I'll look to see if I have any purple marks left. If I do, I'm just going to rub them with just a little warm water, cold warm water, and then they'll disappear. But I want to give you a close-up shot of the stitching so you can see how the corners are done. As you can see, I really made sure I got those corners very crisp and neat.
and there is my corner. Now stick around for a little bonus section. I'm going to show you how you can actually take this design and you're going to carry your theme towards the front. Now it won't be a lot of work, but it'll just give you something to add a little nice finishing touch. So stick around. So let's talk about some other easy ways that you can transform your denim shirt. The first way, which is probably the easiest of everything, is to switch out your buttons. Take a trip to your local fabric or quilting shop and you're going to find an array of buttons that are available. And I'm sure you can find something that would match the motif that you have put on the back of your shirt. So all you would need to do is take one of the buttons off the shirt, take it with you to the store, or if you have a large button stash, go through it and select buttons that are the same size. Now this one's a little bit bigger, but I wanted to show you what to do. You would just select a button of the same size and replace them. Super simple, really easy, and it creates a really big impact. Another option, So my next bonus tip is to use some of this leftover trim from the frame that you made for the back. What I've done, I folded it in half and pressed it. Then I folded each of the ends in and pressed those so that when it folds, it almost looks like bias binding. But this is really a great trim for on a pocket. So what you would do is after you've folded it and you pin it in place, you would simply hand stitch this on. I recommend hand stitching on these pocket areas because it's really difficult to get this over a machine and do a machine stitch on it. So really hand stitching is going to be the best and you can just catch it all along here and then go inside and make sure that that's tacked down as well really a nice finishing touch to your shirt. And finally, let's go over if you have an embroidery machine or if you have a friend that's willing to show you some embroidery and help you out. And bonus tip number three, embroidery. If you or a sewing friend have an embroidery machine, then I'm sure you've already realized how valuable it can be in your creative sewing ventures. Now this is a purchase shirt, but what I wanted to show you is that this motif coordinates beautifully with the applique design that I created on the back of my shirt. What I can do is I can go into different embroidery websites and find little pumpkins or other fall theme motifs and I could embroider them on the front of my shirt. You can keep it simple with just using maybe one little pumpkin or you can add in more. The options are endless. You can also go in and add an additional layer of detail by accenting designs with rhinestones, ride studs, sequins, decorative threads, and even decorative buttons. The possibilities are truly endless. But what you need to know is you need to make this reflect you and your personality. And there you have it, an easy way to incorporate an applique design on the back of your denim shirt. I wanna thank you so much for joining me in today's lesson. And if you found this lesson valuable, or if you learned something, please be sure to give it a like. It will mean the world to me. Also, if you have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments section below. I will put a link in the description to the blog post where you can see the step-by-step -step directions just in case you'd like to print those out and as always thank you so much for joining me if you haven't already subscribed please do so before you leave and make sure you ring that bell so that you are notified every time new sewing content is uploaded thank you and i'll see you in the next video